this part of it. I'm, I proved this. Let me see. I, I don't have that much time left. Um, and I don't go through the steps of, you know, know and show. I just write out a clean proof. Um, I use the subgroup test to prove this. Uh, I have to show it's closed. So what does that mean? I have to take an arbitrary A and B and G. The criteria to B and Z is that it has to commute with all the other elements. So what do we know from that property that A and B and G are, are in the Z? I know that A commutes with every other element and B commutes with every other element in this subset, Z. Um, one tip here is, uh, again, some of you have a lot of proof writing experience and some of you have less, but notice that I didn't use a B here. I used an X and I used a Y here. It's a common, um, if you haven't written a lot of proofs, and that's totally possible as an undergrad I didn't write that many proofs um, that's my professors let me get away with it um, so if you haven't done that one of the first mistakes that you can make is reusing letters so um, here what I know is that a commutes with everything else so I have to call it an X and I don't use the same X here um, I use a different dummy variable Y so that I don't accidentally confuse the two with each other and I definitely don't use a B here because I took two arbitrary elements and I'm going to do something with them and I don't want to use them again here. And so I said, gave you a little warning. Notice I used different letters. It is true that if I used a B there, that would be true, but A and B have already been picked out. Um, and, and designated, so I don't want to use them again. Your no is that A and B commute with all elements, and that's another reason why I chose an X and a Y, because X and Y stand for arbitrary variables. So what do I need to show? I need to show that A star B also belongs to Z of G. That's closure. So I took two arbitrary elements, and I want to show when I binary operate them that they still ended up here. So here's what I have to show clearly delineated. So what do I have to show? I have to show that if I took A star B and start it with something else from Z, that that new element still is commutative. That's the property of being in Z. So Z is a set. It's a club. The criteria to be in that club is that, it's, um, that it commutes with every element in the club. So how do I show A star B is in the club? I have to show that it com commutes with an arbitrary element from Z. Well, first of all, by associativity, I can pull the um, B and the C apart. And I also can rotate these around because B and C are both in Z. And the property or criteria for being in Z means that things commute in Z. So those can rotate around. And by associative property, I can pull the A and the C together and rotate them around. And a and C commute. Notice that I pink highlighted both here so you can see that I'm applying that property of from my no to um, get this A and the C to turn around. And I get C star A star B by associativity as well. And I'm using the associativity of the big group to allow me to pull things apart. So A star B it by itself is an element that commutes with other elements of Z. Thus, Z is closed. This was a little messy here, but um, I, I just want to point out that this was all about bookkeeping. And um, in my experience, when I've seen students trip up on stuff like this, it was because they didn't map out what they had to know and show very carefully before they started driving forward and they accidentally reused letters or um, it wasn't clear that they were showing what they had to show. Now I have to show the identity is in there. Well, the identity commutes with everything, so the identity is in there. Finally, I have to show, Kristen, that wasn't too hard. I guess we could have just shown the inverses were in there and then we're done, but let's, uh, it's nice to write one line that's one line. And finally, we have to show that if an arbitrary element is in there, its inverse is in there. 
So what does that mean? I need to show that the inverse commutes with every element. We know the inverse in G exists, so that object exists, but I need to now show that that inverse element actually commutes with other elements of Z. So I just jotted down up here what I know. And then I started using the cancellation property. Multiply both sides by A inverse. Why would I do that? Well, I would do that because I want to show something about A inverse. And my equation here from my no has no A inverse in it. So I got to get A inverses in play. So I'm going to hit both sides with an A inverse and hope for the best. Associativity lets me pull things aside. I get an E from this by properties of group. So I get X is A inverse XA by definition of E. But now I write by A inverse and that will finish it off. So this is just high school algebra taken with very many steps and I get the result I need to show that x a inverse is equal to a inverse x for any arbitrary x in the set z. By the way, um, I, I've mentioned this before if you had me as an undergrad or had me for a graduate class before, everyone's got their style um, of how they write proofs. You've been in other graduate courses or maybe this is your first graduate course, I don't know but you've seen undergraduate professors too. Um, different people in my department have different styles. I admire other people's styles. I never like my own as much. I like to um, draft something and then edit away. That's my style. So you see that I put the steps up there and then these come after. I start saying buy this, buy that and start putting my arrows. So I'm an arrow girl. So I like to like I mean, that's one way to um, logically, step by step, get to the final point. Some people like to write in prose. Um, some people like to, almost like a high school geometry class, split it up into two pieces. This is why I said what I said. Some people like to have all the computations first and the prose underneath it. So you're going to get different styles from different professors. And you're seeing mine, and you also have your own. And I have a theory that styles have something to do with the personality. My husband says I let everything pile up and then I clean it up all at once. So maybe that, that's showing in my proof writing. Okay, so A inverse is in Z because it commutes. Since X was arbitrary, A inverse commutes with all elements of Z. So A inverse, by definition, also belongs to the club of Z. Hence, by the subgroup test theorem, Z is also a subgroup of G. And I believe this is what I assigned for you. So give it a shot, try it out yourself, and then you can come back to the video if you get stuck in how you have to break this down.